Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to plan your meals for the week with a budget in mind. The worksheets that I'll be using in this short video will be in the links in the description box below. I hope this video helps and I think it's really exciting that with the worksheets I provide for you, you'll be able to plan your meals as well. I hope you enjoy. Okay everyone, so here is our grocery game plan weekly calendar. Again, the link is in the description box below so you could print out your own copy. Now, the first thing you wanna do is kind of examine what ingredients you currently have in your pantry and in your refrigerator. Once you kind of get a feeling of what you have, you can then develop recipes around that so you don't have to buy as much. So let's start with breakfast for Sunday. Now for breakfast and lunch and dinner, of course we wanna find recipes that are healthy and nutritious, but also inexpensive. So you can of course search on the internet and there's certain online resources where you could enter ingredients and they'll spit out recipes that have some of those ingredients. Now let's start with breakfast. So let's say for breakfast, I wanna make peanut butter raisin oatmeal. So oatmeal, and you know what? I already have all the ingredients I need for that, perfect. Um, we have the peanut butter, we have the raisins, and we have the rolled oats or steel cut oats. So that's perfect. That's our breakfast right there. We don't have to buy anything for that one. Now, let's say for Monday's breakfast, what am I going to have? I don't want the same thing. I'm going to get sick of it. So let's say I want cereal with fruit and milk. So generally, you're going to have to buy more of the ingredients that expire quicker and don't remain as fresh as long. So we're going to have to buy some fruit and we're going to have to buy some milk. Now, fruits that are inexpensive year-round are actually bananas because they're almost always in season. So let's say I want bananas with my, with my cereal. And then, of course, we want low-fat milk. So we can just go over here and select fat-free or low-fat milk. Or you can get almond milk or your milk of choice. Both of these ingredients are relatively inexpensive. And the best part is that you could use them in other recipes later in the week as well. So you can reuse ingredients to save even more money. Let's take a break from breakfast for a little bit and move on to lunch. Let's say for Sunday's lunch, I want a tuna and cucumber wrap. Okay, delicious. So what does that take? That takes maybe a whole grain tortilla, a can of tuna, maybe a little bit of hummus or mayonnaise or avocado, and then some cucumber sticks. So that's a good lunch. Why? Because it has some fiber from the wrap. And um, if you're using, let's say you're using avocado, that's good. And then it has some protein from the canned tuna. Now, don't be afraid of canned ingredients. You can always buy decent quality canned ingredients. And most of the time, they're not that bad for you. So in this case, canned tuna is good because it has a lot of protein in it and generally it's healthy. Now let's say you already have canned tuna in your pantry because it lasts a while. Perfect. One less thing you have to buy. Let's say that from the previous week, you also have your whole grain wraps. That's one thing less you have to buy as well. But you want to buy cucumbers now because they're fresh and they don't always last as long. So you want to buy your cucumbers and maybe you want to buy avocado for the wrap as well. So then you would go into the vegetable section and for fresh vegetables, you would say cucumber. Okay. And then maybe you want to buy your avocado. I would say try to use avocado and hummus in place of mayonnaise as much as possible. The reason is because they offer that fatty feeling, the fatty taste to the, to the food. Um, and they also offer nutrients that wouldn't be found in mayonnaise and more flavor. So whenever you can, try to find these kinds of substitutions. That's lunch for Sunday. Now, how about Monday? Let's say for Monday's lunch, I want a salad. Maybe I want a green salad with honey, lemon, chicken. This is great because I'm getting my protein from the chicken, but I'm also getting a lot of fibers and healthy uh, nutrients from the salad itself. So let's say we'll get, we'll have our lettuce, we'll have obviously the chicken, tomato, cucumber. We'll make our own dressing and then maybe we'll have some bread with it, whole wheat bread for carbs. 
What do we need to buy? Okay, so looking at what we have in our pantry and our fridge from the week before, we see that we have some leftover tomatoes from a sandwich we made the previous week. And then we also have cucumbers. Why? Because we just made the wrap yesterday with cucumbers on it. One less thing to buy. Now what we do have to buy is romaine lettuce because that doesn't last as long and we also don't have any of it in our fridge. So what we can do now is go to vegetables and write romaine lettuce, which does not cost that much, especially if you don't buy organic. And I emphasize don't buy organic because it usually costs more and the benefits are not large. Now what you do also need to buy is chicken. Maybe you don't have chicken in your pantry. Now I would recommend buying chicken that could be frozen so you could use it again later in the week or month and that way it's just easier for you overall. So buy your chicken, white meat chicken, hopefully chicken breast so you reduce your saturated fat intake but right now we're mostly focused on finding that protein source that is not as expensive. Okay, now let's talk about dinner. So we're talking about Sunday night's dinner. So you wanna take kind of a holistic look at what you've already made for yourself. You had oatmeal, some really good carbs right there, fiber. You had your tuna and cucumber wrap. You got some more fiber, you got some protein. Now for dinner, we can leave this open to a variety of different recipes because we already got a good source of nutrients that we needed. Let's say we're in the mood for chicken again. Now, it's really good to choose chicken here and then chicken here because you could actually reuse the chicken that you used in this recipe and put it on your salad as part of the leftovers. This is, of course, going to save you more money and you have less to buy um, once you finish your weekly meal planner. So, right. So, let's do honey lemon chicken and... Now, we already added chicken to our grocery list right here because we already knew we wanted to make this salad for lunch but now it's going to double as a dinner and as a lunch which is beautiful because it's a really good source of protein and you're just saving even more money on that poultry now what else does this take it's going to take brown rice it's going to take frozen corn and maybe frozen peas um, really whatever you want to add to it it's your own personal recipe but for our purposes here we're going to just kind of investigate what we already have and what we need so we already have frozen peas and corn from a recipe in the week prior. Beautiful. That's one less thing to buy. However, we want to give it a nice lemon flavor. So we have to buy another lemon. This, of course, is fresh fruit. Lemons don't cost that much. They're in season year round. And you're just saving all the more money. Now, what are we going to do for dinner for, t for Monday night? Okay. So maybe you're in the mood for spaghetti. Now again, let's investigate what we already had today for breakfast and lunch. Okay, for breakfast, there was cereal, fruit, and milk. That's a pretty good start to your day. Lunch, you had a salad with chicken. That's a really good source of uh, fresh vegetables and protein. Um, so you're already off to a really good start. So for dinner, we can be creative again. We can be flexible. Okay, you're not really lacking that many nutrients right now in your diet. So for dinner, you could kind of plan based on what you think you might want. So let's try one pan spaghetti because it's quick, it's easy, and it's relatively inexpensive. So the problem with spaghetti is that it is, of course, a lot of carbs and not always a lot of protein. The way that you can remedy this is by, by whole grain spaghetti to get more fiber. Or if you really want to, you could use vegetable noodles and uh, use zucchini and actually spiralize it using a handheld spiralizer. But if that's too much work for you, I would totally recommend buying whole grain spaghetti because it's dirt cheap and you're getting a lot of uh, fiber and nutrients just from that. So to give this more protein, we're going to make a meat sauce with it. So let's use ground turkey and some tomato sauce and spices to make that sauce. You already have the canned tomato paste and the canned tomatoes in your pantry. Perfect. You already have the spices as well. What you need to buy is the ground turkey. You're gonna have a side of vegetables, of course. So let's say you want frozen steamed broccoli. You already have that in your freezer. You're good to go. See, the pattern with this is that you really wanna stock up on frozen vegetables and keep them in your freezer. So that way, when it's time for dinner, you already have something good to go to. 
and it'll last you a while and you're going to be reducing the amount of waste because um, you could keep using it again and again and it won't necessarily go bad. So the only thing we have to really buy for this is the ground turkey. So we're going to go over to me over here and I'm just going to write ground turkey and make sure it's the lean variety so try to get a very high percentage of lean meat and a very low percentage of fat to reduce your saturated fat intake. But good, that's protein right there. You're going to have broccoli on the side or whatever frozen vegetable you want. Um, and of course, if the produce is in season and it's inexpensive, try to buy fresh produce because it does offer a better nutritional value and it tastes better. But that's entirely up to you. So the last thing that I'm going to focus on with you today for Sunday and Monday are snacks. Snacks are right over here. And everyone needs snacks. Snacks uh, fill up what we don't actually get during our main meals, and they keep us full until the next meal and keep you from overeating. Find healthy snacks, okay? So you can make your own popcorn. Let's try that for Monday, okay? It's really good with olive oil and salt, but you could really put whatever you want on it based, based on what you have in your pantry. Just try not to overdo it with the butter. Popcorn is really inexpensive to buy if you buy dried corn kernels and then you can just make it in a pan, um, make sure you cover it with a lid, and that's a super cheap snack to have and it's pretty good for you as well. Okay, for over here, maybe you want carrot sticks with hummus. Hummus is a great dip alternative because it's mainly made from the chickpeas and the best part is that you can make hummus yourself if you have canned chickpeas, maybe a little bit of ground sesame, and you could throw that together in no time. It's also a lot less expensive than buying it pre-packaged. And of course you could buy the carrot sticks. Um, let's say you already have the ingredients to make the hummus. You just need to buy your carrots, your carrots over here. Okay. And then what else? You already have your dried corn kernels because those last a while in the pantry and whatever topping you want for your popcorn, you also happen to have. So see, just for these two days, we haven't even had to buy a whole lot because we planned accordingly. We planned based on what we already had and some of the ingredients even overlap so that we're actually buying less. So in this way, you can really plan according to what you have and plan according to your budget. It'll save you a lot of time and money in the long run. Once you finish your weekly meal planner, fantastic. Don't forget to transfer the ingredients that you need to your ingredient list and try to focus on healthy ingredients that'll keep you well-rounded and give you the nutrients that you need. I hope that this video helped you and I hope that you see that it's not that hard to plan your meals for the week. Don't forget that there's plenty of ideas online and I believe in you and I know that you'll do a great job planning meals for your family for the week according to a budget.